Hey, it's David, Richter Scale Studios. I'm actually doing a small tutorial this evening. I'm in my dining room. My dog, uh, Randall, has had surgery, had his spleen removed, craziness. So I'm keeping an eye on him. He's right next to me on a couch. Um, I'm doing a tutorial on a lot of us in the 3D printing terrain hobby uh, have a problem with is gluing the terrain together when you need to. A lot of schools of thought, uh, one is using super glue, which is very easy to use, but doesn't always hold. Uh, you find a good one, I think the latest one that's uh, the craze is Loctite, uh, the gels and another one you mix, and I've had good uh, results with it. Another one I've seen out there and I've posted about it, never done it, is converting a high temperature hot glue gun and printing your own PLA glue sticks and using that. Uh, that seems involved and also those printing those glue sticks all the time would be a pain and the uh, the bead that thing was printing out was kind of crazy big so the control was a little issue too another one I saw and was going to try but looked at it and it looked kind of um, unfeasible in the long run is friction welding using a Dremel or a rotary tool and using the right size collet that will hold a piece of uh, 1.75 uh, filament which we use in all the 3d printers and spin it at a high speed and then run like a little tiny piece out of the end of it against the seam and putting a, a bead, a, like a, a plastic a bead of weld. So the problems with that is you have to use very short pieces of PLA. So your material to use is very small because if you get any big, it's gonna be a basically a weed whacker and trying to get that to lay on a small seam of a model is crazy. What I found kind of by accident or I haven't seen this before a few years ago, I bought this. And this is a 3D printing pen, an inexpensive one. I think I paid $29 for it in 2015. I played with it for a couple days and was thinking of ways of using it to make wires and stuff on uh, other kind of terrain. Wasn't even thinking about 3D printing uh, terrain and stuff like that. So this morning I picked up a piece uh, of terrain and tried it. Oh, and another thing, when we spools run down, we have always a little bit of PLA left on the spools and it gets tossed. Or now with, uh, like one of my new printers has a, or two of my new printers have our Bowden extruders. So they have these long Bowden tubes with filament detectors. So when it runs out of filament at the extruder end, uh, you have, um, you can change out the filament and then switch rolls and continue with the print. Excuse me on that. Uh, like that is from, I believe last night, I had three rolls from Maker's Geek. The main one, uh, the green, that's the, you see here, that's uh, Army Green from Maker's Geek. And then I ran uh, one of my favorite colors, that's that uh, kind of a beige khaki color. That's called Urban Fossil. And then I finished it off with uh, Gray Matter Gray. And that's this plate over here, that's that color. It's kind of like a translucent grayish silver. So it looks kind of cool. I'm gonna paint over it, but it's a good way not to uh, waste filament. But even after that, when you run out with a Bowden tube, that's, uh, if people know 3D printing, the, uh, the, the one I just showed on my uh, Prusa, that's direct drive. Basically, you're running from the spool right into the extruder into the hot end. And there's maybe an inch uh, of filament left over when it detects it. You gotta take it apart, that's a big pain. But it's an awesome printer. A Bowden tube, your extruder is against one of the gantries, that's the side of the frame, and the extruder is running, uh, the mifilament they are pushing it through, and it goes through like an 18 inch, 12 to 18 inch tube, and that goes into the hot end, and that goes onto your plate, and that will build your model. So when you run out of filament at the extruder, you still have uh, 12 to 8 inches of filament left in the Bowden tube. You gotta pull that out, because it can't use it anymore, because there's nothing to push it. So I figured a new way to use that, that's for the, the, the welding pens. Uh, this is a little more than that, this is some, um, Solutech uh, silver, and that's a cool color too. And I did a small weld, let me put this back. This morning when I was trying to figure this out, and it's this one. And excuse my technique, I am not a professional welder, I haven't touched a welder in years. So that is the Solutech. And I ran some beads, especially on this piece like this, you're not gonna see underneath it. So, and then when I prime it, I can actually probably go in there with a little bit of a sanding stick or a file. Most likely a sanding stick, you don't want to ruin your files with this plastic. 
and uh, clean it up a little bit, but it's not necessary. Just prime it and paint it and you're go good to go. And this is, obviously you can see this is, watch it pop off in front of the camera, that'd be funny. Obviously that it's holding very well. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. So we have this piece. Uh, this is, um, I believe it's any cubic black that came with it and that's this army green. And I gotta make sure it's in the right position. So I want all my uh, pieces to be modular and match. So let's try that. And I gotta load up my filament real quick. I wanted to show you how that works. And I'm gonna have a link to this on my below down below through my affiliate link on Amazon. And you gotta wait for it to catch. I have it. There we go. We can hear that. Then here for safety and for clean, I have like a small ramekin with a damp paper towel in it so I can clean. Uh, this is ceramic tip. I, I thought it was plastic, but it is ceramic. Okay, and I ground down and let it heat up a little bit and see if it. There we go. So let's uh, wipe that off. Well, let's see if I got another paper towel here. Try not to burn your fingers. This is just as hot as a regular 3D printer. Because I am running electricity through it. It's like a little uh, cord. It looks like something you'd use on like an old cell phone. So I'll grab the piece here. And then you have these arrows. You have a, a forward arrow and a backward arrow. Uh, you can't leave this stuff in this. Gotta make sure on camera. And just put it in there. And just kind of squirt it like toothpaste. And I'm gonna do like little tack welds to hold it together first, then I can go and reinforce it later. I hope you can see that. I'm doing another cell phone video. Because the other video, uh, my Canon is like permanently attached upstairs to the computer and getting ready for that uh, orbital heavy lifter painting tutorial I'm planning. But the uh, dog thing kind of threw everything off, which is okay, I mean, as long as he's good. Actually, these single beads are cleaner because I kind of just wanted to really get that one. And let's do here. Because this, you know, this thing is kind of, it's not the most tiniest detail thing to work with. And then we have to, and now we're good here. A little mess up there, not too bad. And this pipe here, let's just do like some tacks, see if that'll work. I'll try to get in there, let's see, that's the hard thing is getting the angle. Maybe some right here. Let's see if I can get this side without burning my hand. So I'm trying to get, uh, nothing's gonna show or affect uh, the, you know, putting these together. So let's see here. We're done. We have a welded piece. And now we can put these together and we have a completely functional and yeah, my welding got better on my second piece, yay. Let me put this somewhere safe again. And once again, I wanna talk about uh, war layer. Uh, Andrew approached me a while ago to paint some stuff for him, but my printers are all broken. So that uh, uh, caused uh, that to be a flop. But I got onto the Kickstarters, amazing stuff. Hopefully he ever does another Kickstarter, I'll paint for him. Uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough that he took one of the truck things that he released and I painted it and posted it and he used it as a, uh, a um, sample piece, which is pretty cool. And another thing I like about these, let's say if we wanted to uh, do like a bazaar or a market in the underhive, get this angle right, so my phone's on this weird thing I rigged. You have this garage door type of thing and then you have this open th stuff. This is like really cool terrain to do, um, like a bazaar or market, like I said, but you have all these like partial um, covers parts 
you can go in here, you have you know, full cover or some overwatch area. So that is, this, that is it right now. I just wanted to show you that. I'll just take this apart real quick, put it on, back arrow. That's it. We are done. So once again, thank you for joining me. I'll be actually doing more videos again. Uh, everyone knows about my health issues for the last year or so. That's why I would have 11th month lapse between videos and getting uh, trying to get prolific again with the hobby and um, with the dog being sick. That's not going to be too much. I'm home with him. I'm not uh, feeling bad myself and occasionally I have work issues come up. But thanks again for joining me and we'll see you soon.